world headquarters of common sense. Talk radio. Richard Tice is here. Just another just, quiet Friday. Just another quiet week, <laughs> another quiet Thursday and Friday. Unbelievable. I mean, the meltdown in Downing Street, I think, is a bit like the meltdown in the weather above central London. It's, it's horrible, grey, it? it's gloomy, Grim. it's miserable, yeah. it's windy, and I suspect all of those things apply to what's so going you're on not in buying, Downing Street. So you're not buying the, oh, this is just a reorganisation story, which didn't come out until this morning, right? Just ridiculous. Mm. The, the sort of the way they use WhatsApp messages to say, oh, let's try and pretend that this is sort of part of the Prime Minister's plan. Uh, the resignation of Munira Mirza is absolutely seismic. Yes. You know, she's worked with the Prime Minister for 14 years, and it's the reason that she gave in her very open, honest resignation letter about what, uh, the, what the Prime Minister tried to do with, with Sir Keir Starmer in the House of Commons with those, with those comments. And I think this is a Prime Minister that's, that's essentially out of control and things are just melting down around him and his, his, own, his own judgment is melting down. And it's... It, it, well, it's, it's actually not even so much that, is it? It's the fact that he isn't really able to make any decision now based on anything other than how is this going to help me stay in the job? Uh, well, but the bottom line is he is the Prime Minister of the country and we all expect him to be able to make decisions on behalf of the country. Mm. And I think you're right. I think that it's all now about how to prop himself up where actually, I think, whatever anybody's views, uh, uh, wh however anybody voted, the reality is that what's going on is damaging the country. And I think more and more Tory MPs are having a really good hard look at themselves. Yes, and I and think more and more letters will probably be going in as a result, as we've seen more and more going. We don't know how many are there, but it's right to say, isn't it, that the only people now that can really uh, remove him, if that is what people want, is, are the Tory MPs. It's in the hands of the Tory MPs, which it has been, but they have a, an important decision to make. Are they happy and prepared to allow... Boris Johnson to remain as Prime Minister, given everything that's happened, given all that we know, mm. given how he's behaved, and they've then got to sleep at night and look themselves in the eye and look their constituents in the eye. And, you know, we, we all know the reality. We don't need to wait for the police inquiry. Mm. In my view, uh, he's humiliated the office of the Prime Minister, uh, the, the office of government, trust in government. Uh, he's deeply damaging... Uh, the reputation of the Conservative Party. And, yeah. he's hu and he's humiliating and embarrassing this great country on the international yes. stage. And, all and that's people, really serious. And all the people, and there are fewer of them now than there were, uh, who were having a go at us for having a go at Boris, saying, you know, he's the best Prime Minister we've had. Because when you ask them what he's actually done in terms of the substance of it, highlighted again this week by the Northern Ireland Protocol, you know, another First Minister has resigned in, in Northern Ireland. Yes. Brexit still hasn't happened for the people living in Northern Ireland. So as much as it has happened for us, and, and we're very happy with that, it hasn't happened for everyone in the UK. Similarly, the migrant story pops up again yesterday. Uh, we're spending, what, four so, to five to six million pounds a day? I mean, this is day. unbelievable. So the Home Office, uh, whether by error or by sort of uh, deliberate concealment, uh, they revealed a figure of just over a million pounds a day. Mm. This is just the cost of hotel accommodation only. Only, yes. Okay? And then all of a sudden, a day later, they said, sorry, error, actually, it's four times that. Yeah. It's nearly nearly five million pounds a day. That's last year's figure. Yeah. I've done the calculations and the forecasts for this mm. year based on the likelihood of sixty to 80,000 yes. more well, illegal migrants January's coming across. Well, it wasn't January's figure for this year, something like seven times previous Yes, January. correct. So if, if you work on the basis that sixty to 80,000 illegal migrants will come across the channel this year. By the end of this year, I estimate the hotel bill will be between 12 and 15 million pounds per day. And it's really important everyone understands, this is not including the long-term accommodation, right. this is just the hotel bill. Right. It's not doesn't include food and, or anything. And I was told by the man whose name escapes me, who was the, um, he was the chair of the Migrant Committee, the Migration Committee in the House of Commons, is an MP for Kent somewhere, he said to me when I said, where do these guys go after they get taken off the boats and they get put on the buses and they get taken to hotels? Oh, they go to hotels, how long for? He said, oh, a couple of days. Absolute rubbish. They're there Absolutely. long term, aren't they? These hotels are basically, they are taken on long leases now uh, by the Home Office, by the government, uh, from the hoteliers, and they're staying there weeks and months and months. And so the total bill to the nation every year now of just the accommodation loan 
is billions and billions of pounds. I'm having uh, some additional work and research done on it to try and truly get to the bottom mm. of it. Yes. But these numbers Because are... they've been sweeping this under the carpet now ever since December of 2019. They've done nothing about it. We've heard from Pretty Patel numerous times. We're going to crack down on it. We're going to give France oh. some money. Uh, we're going to tell France to stop them coming. We're going to turn them back. She's it's a... getting worse, she, not better. She gives brilliant warm words and writes lovely articles and it all sounds great. And the thing is, people bought into that because we grew up learning to trust ministers when they say stuff and when they write stuff. Yeah. Uh, but then the truth is that there's no delivery, there's no action, it's nonsense. We know that now, mm. th it's not even a question of, of telling untruths or mistruths or making errors, they are deliberately lying, yeah. time and time again. And I think people have had enough of it. They really are. And also, people have been very, very hot this week, particularly on the green agenda and how ridiculous that is and why, for example, I mean, Rishi Sunak, and I found it incredibly bizarre yesterday. I know you're, you're going to tell me the reason why he's offering people free money, even though it's not free money, because, you know, at the end of the day, people are saying, why not do away with the 20%, um, you know, uh, green Environmental subsidy, levies, that's uh, right. Take away 5% of VAT, 25% straight off the top. Why the hell is he giving people money in order to continue to enrich these uh, energy companies? It seems bizarre it's, to me. It's more than bizarre. It's completely illogical. Uh, the reality is that people must... They must not buy into the narrative that the Conservatives are desperately spinning. One of their ministers was on one of the other uh, big broadcasters... Uh, this morning, trying to pretend that it's the global prices. Mm. That's nonsense. Mm. The simple proof is, look at the US. The US, they, uh, they, 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 they extract shale gas, they, they, they use all their own domestic energy, and because of that, guess where their gas and electricity prices are, Mike? 50%. I was going to say, 50 a lot than now. of where our prices are. Right. So this myth, this nonsense, that we're exposed to global energy prices is simply not mm. the case. If you use your own energy, and we've got bags of it, We've got 50 years plus yeah. of gas and oil under our feet, on our yeah. shores and under the North Sea that's ours, mm. that this government has, over many years, decided not to use. They're leaving that treasure undergr underground mm. and exposing us to uh, the likes of Putin and people yeah. in the Middle East. And they're also cashing in, by the way, on the increase in the prices, because yes. by taking that tax out of the uh, the bill, you know, they're making more money than they were so, you know, this time last year. So the energy production companies, the Shells, the BPs mm. of this world, are making off like bandits. Right. Um, well, you so, saw Shell's profits yeah, yesterday. So, so the shareholders of those companies are doing very well. But let's remember that the reality is, if you've got shares in a company, the chances are, it's almost by definition, you will you will be uh, you will be wealthier than the average wealth of the average individual mm. in the country. So you'll have more money than the average person. Yeah. So therefore, what, what's actually happening? You're enriching the wealthier at the expense yeah. of the least well off. Mm. And so once again, uh, you've got basically Rishi, the Chancellor, of the Tories. They're moving money from the poorest in society uh, to the wealthier, and it's just wrong. Yeah. And you know, look, I believe in free markets, but these are exceptional windfall profits that these energy companies mm. are making through no benefit of their own, mm. but through the stupidity of this government uh, and what Putin's doing. And so it's not unreasonable yeah. to say, actually, there should be a windfall tax. And what instead what Sunak is doing, he's, he's basically giving everybody an interest-free loan for five years. The big flaw in his plan, Mike, is that he's assuming that this is a temporary mm. rise in gas prices. I've got bad news for, for everyone. Uh, if Putin's got anything to do with this, this will be far from temporary. Yes. He wants this to be permanent. Well, he would love to keep things as they are, wouldn't he? So that everything's or, a bit unstable, everything's a bit un... Or un worse. Yeah. Or worse. Imagine, actually, if he increases the instability and the price of gas goes up mm. even further. Right. I'm afraid that is as likely as gas prices are to fall. Yes. This is the severity of, of, essentially, what has happened, and this is all at the Conservative Party's door mm. as a result of their energy policies for the last decade. Yes. And people need to remember... And the deregulation of the industry, which has led to cowboy companies being set up, and I call them that deliberately because they were effectively piggybacking uh, off the main energy suppliers, saying, oh, we'll act as a middleman, we'll sell our gas to uh, to Richard Tice, uh, we'll take it off you, yeah. we'll might charge a little bit less. We, You know, they made massive and, gambles and, it is, and, it is, and lost. And, and I got exposed to it uh, on, on one of my commercial properties where uh, we bought energy through one of these middle companies. Yeah. Uh, we paid the bill to them. And guess what? They didn't pass that money on to the energy producer. Really? So we then get we then get contacted by British Gas right. saying, you haven't paid us. Really? Well, hang on, folks. Yeah. We have paid you. Here's the proof. 
but the middleman hadn't passed it on because they were in deep right. financial trouble. So, so the whole thing is that there's been no regulation properly, really. Ofgem have been a disgrace, useless in my view. Uh, in fact, they're more keen to actually uh, help out the suppliers than they are the customers. And you know what else is going on at Ofgem? The guy who runs it, guess where he used to work? The Department for Climate Change. Oh, surprise, surprise. So, no, so y your description of, of cowboys is right. It is the Wild West out there. And this is all, all as a result of what uh, this, this Conservative Party have done over many, many mm. years. And we're all now paying the price. And people need to remember yes. that. Don't buy into this fact that it's, it's the global prices. If we had gone down the American route, thanks to what they did with, with shale gas... Uh, thanks to, for example, President Trump. People may not like this, but President Trump uh, allowed there to be more exploration yes. in the US. Well, he so made the got... US self-sufficient, didn't he? Yeah, it, and they were going that way anyway, mm. uh, but he increased it. And by being self-sufficient, and that's where we need to be, and we can be. Yeah. It's not too late. We could be self-reliant in energy in a matter of years. And that's the way to go. We've got this treasure Let's use it, yes. because it belongs to all of us. It does, but also let's look at the taxing regime, because in America you would never get away with taxing the oil and gas business uh, in the way that they do here at, at the point of delivery, for example. You know, what are we paying for petrol? You fill up your car, it's something like 85% of that is tax, right? In America it's nothing like that, because they'd never get away with it politically. There would literally be people revolting in the streets. And, and in a sense, the reason that, uh, that Sunak has resorted to what he, what he announced this week is because he realises that actually these increases are so unpalatable that uh, you know people won't put up with it. No. And I don't think we've seen the last of, of these measures. Uh, and again, what he's trying to do is cover up for the embarrassment that about 25% of people's electricity bills is all to do with these environmental mm. levies, these renewable subsidies. And remember where they go, Mike. Those subsidies, they go to the, uh, the companies that have built these renewable, these uh, these wind farms, yeah. these solar farms, and huge numbers of those are making big, big profits, mid-teen percentage yeah. profits every single year, and many of them are actually their US private equity groups, their overseas mm. sovereign wealth funds. So we're subsidising foreign investors' profits, yeah. and that is wrong. It is just completely wrong. Really we've got is. to have a wholesale reassessment of our utility and our energy Absolutely. policy in this country. I mean, we had some very interesting questions being asked yesterday by various people about, for example, uh, one one came in that said, you know, my energy company, I'm not going to say the name, uh, claimed to be completely and utterly uh, selling us renewable energy, right? So why is it going up as fast as the gas prices are going up? And it, the, the answer came back from Octopus Energy, who actually answered it on the tweet, uh, who said, oh, well, it's, uh, it's because we are basically, the, it's a basket of goods that make the price. So electricity might be cheap, but if gas goes up, then so does electricity. Well, doesn't make any sense, does it? Well, the reality is that, of course, you know, very often it's the gas that makes the electricity. So they do move in sync, yeah. in the same with, with oil. Um, but this is all a function of being reliant on uh, energy coming from overseas. And to all of those who say, oh, but we don't, you know, we, we want to try and reduce exposure, we want to use less gas. Well, hang on. Mm. We, even the government admits we're using gas for the next 30 or 40 years, yeah. at least, yeah. at least. And if you use, if you import gas, then it is creating, you are, you are consuming about 60% or more additional CO2 than if we were using our own gas. Mm. So actually using British gas, right, that's um, taken from our, from our own shores, under our own feet, that actually is better for the environment mm. than bringing in imported yes. gas from the Middle East or Russia. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Uh, we are here at Talk Radio. Richard Tice is here. He's back, of course, on Sunday. We're going to talk some more about what's going on inside Downing Street. Good talk. Hot talk. Bold talk. Talk Radio. Listen on your smart speaker. Watch it live on your smart TV. The world headquarters of common sense. Talk Radio.